Thank you so much to Lucy and to Holly. Um, I'm really pleased to be able to share some of my work here today. Um, I'm going to talk about three works and um, share this at the end, which is um, in the middle of being made. Um, but this is the work that last week we were filming um, up the coast a bit, and thankfully the weather wasn't like it was today. Um, but yeah, so there's um, a trilogy of works, um, a book, um, and photographs, and then this. So this book and this reproduction was published in September of last year. And the five chapters of the book metaphorically chart the journey of trying to get pregnant. Um, and the photographs featured in Endless Reproduction were made using a piece of kit called Trigger Smart. Um, it's a bit of photographic equipment that automatically fires the shutter when an infrared beam is broken by movement, so they use it a lot in wildlife photography, or if sound and light levels change. Um, in Endless Reproduction, birds document the human nest, apples photograph themselves falling up trees, balls hang in clusters in front of our vision, and futile and wrong-headed experiments flash intermittently in the dark. And there are um, texts that go with the beginning of um, each chapter, and this from the epigraph. Two years ago, when I looked at all the images together, I saw how they unconsciously mirrored the stages of trying to conceive, beginning with relying on nature, then living by a 28-day calendar, being assisted by drugs and monitoring, and then increasingly random trying before eventual defeat. So I guess like Lucy, I was making work, but not consciously making work. I was taking photographs all the time um, that I was going through IVF and trying to get pregnant, and sort of thought it was my practice, but didn't really know what, quite what to do with it. Um, so about 10 years after I first started taking them, I, I made this book. Chapter one, nature. I set up the infrared beam, link the boxes to the camera, and place seed on the perch. Birds land, they break the beam, and photograph the inside of the room. I'm in there with my camera, and photograph them as they unknowingly photograph me. I leave the room, and the birds continue to photograph. The images without me are better. I look tired and fragile. The idea that people have been in the bed is better than how the reality looks in a photograph. This from chapter two, timing. Seven years later, from a friend's, for a friend's fundraiser in Cornwall, I choose one of the photographs, taken incidentally as part of testing the kit. In the photograph, I am placing the equipment in a tree. It looks very Adam and Eve, the apples and the angle of the arm, mimicking a snake as it moves diagonally across the image towards the apple. There's nature here and an intention to interfere with it. In these images I was making, in homes, in the kitchen, in living rooms and bedrooms, I eventually saw something that made sense, the shadow. The detail of an object is lost as the flash blasts out the scene, but the shadow of a falling ball gives depth to the image, revealing the creases in the sheet, the folds and the curves that delineate the valleys of grey. Um, I commissioned a text from um, an Italian curator, Paola Paleri, um, when I showed the book and um, images from the last summer um, photographic series, which we'll come to next, um, to go with an exhibition at Gray's Wharf in Penryn um, late last year. And she wrote, um, I'm rather talking about a certain grace filling the empty spaces, which is almost an, as rare and volatile as the void itself. Um, and the next body of work is called Last Summer, which pictures scenes outside my direct experience through something that is. Um, photographs of families with young children are approached through a love of the sea. This series of photographs began on North Island, New Zealand. This was the first photograph that I took. And afterwards, I realised it was the first time in a long time that I'd been able to look long enough to compose a photograph rather than look away from a scene that I could not construct in my own life. So there was something about the beauty of the scene and how this grouping were arranging themselves um, that I felt drawn to, kind of almost like a theatrical kind of performance that felt like it was there for me and my camera. And I felt a closeness um, and a desire to want to capture it, which, which was, felt quite different um, from how the position I'd been in previously. 
and just share a couple of other images from the series which is ongoing. So this was taken at New Train Bay, um, which is very close to Tyrone Bay, a couple of years ago. And they kind of were like that. I said, can I take your photograph? And they were like, yes. And they instantly went ping into camera ready. For t I mean, this woman here in the middle, she's amazing in her strapless swimsuit. So, yeah, I feel like they've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one, uh, which is in the same location. And I sort of tend to spend quite a lot of time there, in and out of the water, trying to look. I mean, trying to look obvious that I'm taking photographs so if people can ask questions. And these days, I either directly approach people afterwards or, or before and give them my contact details and that kind of thing and check that it's OK. Um, but there is a, quite a lot of just hanging around. Um, and as it turned out, so this site, the last two photographs, is where we have just filmed last weekend um, for the work that I'm going to talk about next. And this is an install shot from um, the exhibition mentioned previously. So there's a great show, We Are Floating in Space, across um, Newland Gallery and um, The Exchange in Penzance, which is on until the 1st of June. Um, yeah, loads of works by artists who work in the region, um, either directly making things from materials in the coast or kind of using it as a way of expressing kind of internal states um, and emotions. And I want to say, of course, an enormous thank you to Bettina Wenzel, who's in the audience today, who's been supporting making the work. And it was through an invitation from Newlyn and the Exchange that I put an Arts Council grant in, um, which, which we heard that we got in January, and then, and then this piece of work has been being made. But I'll see it a little bit more afterwards. Sleep well, my darling, how I love The title of the work is taken from a quote from Barbara Hepworth, as Shiria mentioned earlier, and the whole quote, um, which is from a, a Hepworth on Form, a film made in 1968, incidentally the year I was born. The moon rises over water, and the sun rises over water, and they both set over the water. I have enjoyed every morning. I've wakened up and been grateful for the next dawn, the next spring. So, um, briefly, just to outline the project, so I've met with women only four times, so we formed a group very quickly. We had a gathering session, which was supported by Yvonne John from Gateway, Network for Childless Women, uh, ch Women Who Are Childless Not By Choice. Um, then we worked with Claire Inglehart, an amazing choir leader and composer, and she took away words from the women that they wanted to write in relation to expressing their experience and made us three beautiful songs, um, which we sang last week at dusk and at dawn um, at the site that you see there. Um, we were in beautiful costumes, as you can tell, which were made by Victoria Robinson, who's in the audience and was also in the performance, and her mum, Pam, which was really a fantastic experience. And I have been supported by Jodie Day, who's in the front row and speaking later on um, about the project as a whole. Um, I would say that I was blown away by the experience of putting a call out for women, and I didn't know any of them, and they didn't know each other, and ages probably range from early 30s to late 60s. Um, and... Everyone was incredibly generous about taking part in the performance. And I think what, I, what I'm realising now is that there's an enormous difference between what we felt in the moment and how it might come to be as a film. And I think looking at Holly's work, which I, I feel uh, so directly, the, the last video work that you shared, it's like being able to achieve something of, of like honour what it was to be there. So this was our amazing crew. I've never worked with a crew before. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> um, this is um, Neil McGore from the top left, Jasper Hignett, Neil Rose, Rachel Clear Burton, Alban Renard, Jamie Coupland, Jess Folks, Rachel Jones and Fran Rose. And then a group of 12 women um, sang in the morning um, and at night. And we sang our three songs repeatedly for the camera. And then for us, alone, without the crew, 
holding hands and looking at each other and stood in a circle at the edge of a rock pool. Um, the idea for the workshops and the film was to draw on the strength of being in the company of others, and I see this as the final part of the trilogy, ushering in the potential for joy. <laughs>